Well, good afternoon, everybody, um, and welcome to the Sprott School of Business See You at Home Open House. Uh, thank you all so much for attending. I'm looking forward to spending the next 15 or 20 minutes describing our program to you and what you can expect to come the fall um, as you embark on um, on the next stage of your uh, of your educational experience. Obviously, um, a lot of uh, unanswered questions for many of you, um, and hopefully through this presentation and through the Q&A that we have afterward, we'll be able to put um, some of those questions to rest and at least give you a better idea as to um, what it is that we have in store for you. Um, I did want to um, first start off by, um, by well, introducing myself. I'm the Associate Dean of Undergraduate Studies. I'm also an Associate Professor of Finance. I teach uh, upper level finance courses. Um, and, um, and as Associate Dean, my responsibility is to um, govern or manage our two undergraduate programs, the Bachelor of Commerce and the Bachelor of International Business. I'm going to take you through both of those in their present state. I'll talk about some of the tweaks that we have planned for this year, given what's going on um, in terms of the pandemic, um, but did want to give you a big, um, I guess, a broad strokes view of what um, the Sprott School of Business is all about. But I also wanted to take a couple of minutes just to um, hope that um, that this finds you and your families all in good health as you all navigate this new world uh, and try to figure out um, how best to um, to equip yourselves um, and deal with these with these uh, present conditions. Um, uncharted waters indeed, but what these uncharted waters present us and certainly presents to us as a business school is an incredible learning opportunity. We're faced with an opportunity here to um, live take a look at how businesses can cope, how businesses can sustain, can react and can maintain so that um, they can be successful in this potentially new world order. Um, if we can take a silver lining out of that, it's exciting in that it gives us an incredible laboratory opportunity to learn how best to deal with these types of things. Obviously, these aren't um, circumstances that we would wish, but um, but they are what they are. And I just want to at least preface that. Um, as you all know, um, health and well-being of everybody both on campus and those who are coming to campus is paramount. And everything that we're doing through the next couple of months as we prepare for your arrival is all about ensuring that um, health and well-being is first and foremost with regard to all of the decisions that we're making with regard to delivery, et cetera. Um, so with that, if I could um, uh, just make a couple of announcements really quickly before we start, you'll notice on the side that there's an opportunity to ask questions. Um, and there is a, um, a moderator who has just posted a Q&A announcement for you. Do take the time to ask us questions. We have people in the back who are working from um, on admissions, residence, financial aid, um, international team as well for students who might be um, uh, tuning in from abroad, as well as Sprott specific um, folks who can deal with Sprott questions. Uh, some of them we might be able to answer directly within the conversation. Uh, others we will try to deal with through typing or perhaps responding to you later via email, um, but we will uh, hopefully be able to get through everything. But please do, if you do have pressing questions that aren't addressed, um, just put them in that panel and we'll try to get to them as best as we can. Um, I'm also going to be asking um, um, our moderator to, um, to hit the next slides for me as I get through them. So um, again, this is new for me as well. I haven't often done presentations um, open houses to a closed house. So uh, so please bear with me as I go through this. Um, so Carly, please, next slide. There's a five second lag, apparently. We tried this before. There we go. So my first joke is that this building was, this picture was taken this weekend um, when we had the snow here in Ottawa, but no, of course that isn't the case. This is our new building. Uh, the building that will, uh, up until about a week ago, construction had stopped, obviously, because of the pandemic. Um, it has since progressed, thankfully, uh, obviously, with social distancing of the workers involved. Um, but we are on track for, hopefully, uh, move in sometime in between your first and second year. Um, we're not sure exactly when that will be because obviously there have been some delays with regard to the pandemic and the and the freeze on construction, etc. But that's what it looks like. Well, without the snow anyway, thankfully, that's what it looks like from the outside. If you're looking at it from the quad area. Uh, next slide, please, Carly. 
And as you can see on my background, as well as this picture, notice how everybody there isn't practicing social distancing. So this was obviously drawn a little bit earlier. That's what the building will look like once it's complete. Um, the um, the O train you can see off on your right is um, is actually dropping students off right there. So the first building that they would access would in fact be the Sprott School of Business where they would enter into the tunnel system through our building if they wanted or alternatively if they were Sprott students they would come directly to class or grab their coffee um, or meet with their friends in the lobby. Next slide please. And that's what it looked like on the inside about two or three months ago, the same time that picture was taken from the outside with the snow. Uh, you enter into a space. Now, this building was built with purpose. And the reason why I'm showing you these pictures is not so much to brag on the new building necessarily, although it is fun to brag about the new building. But, um, but this building was built with purpose. And it was built with um, the idea that an appropriate environment for business students is one that encourages collaboration and networking. Uh, what that means is that a space needs to be able to support that um, rather than being in, let's say, a high rise that has a very um, small floor plate. Uh, we opted for, again, on purpose, a very wide floor plate so that there are breakout sessions, there are study sessions, there are spaces where students can actually go and congregate. Obviously, pandemic aside, social distancing aside, that, that we'll all talk about that later, um, that allows for the exchange of ideas. Again, if um, if you're thinking about going to business school, I'm sure in, your, in the discussions that you've had with mom and dad at the dinner table um, or with um, with your caregivers, whomever they may be with regard to making this decision, uh, it's all about understanding what it means to support a business, to help a business grow, to help a business solve specific problems. And you can see, as I mentioned earlier, with regard to the pandemic that was thrust upon us, we're given a situation now where we can actually try to think about solving some questions that we've never had to deal with before. And that's that's challenging, but it's also exciting in, 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 in one, as I said, silver lining way. And this building allows us to do that. Carly, next slide, please. And that's what it's going to look like when it's complete. And we're almost there, as I said. Um, notice how there is a, a big screen, a big live screen right in the middle that will be broadcasting all sorts of events, whatever those might be. Um, there's a very fashion conscious woman off on our left who has a pretty cool hat going on and a purse. I don't know what her story is and what course she's coming from, but uh, she looks like she's having a good time. That's what the building is going to look like on the inside. Um, as you can see, an awful lot of space for ideas to be generated, and that's what it's all about. The whole preface or the whole premise of a, of a business school is to allow for, you'll see those three C's that I have up on top there, create, creative, connected and caring community. On the creative side, it should be fairly self-evident that a business school and business students, in order to be relevant and in order to be topical, needs to be creative, needs to think outside the box. Things change as we're seeing happening, as I said, unfolding in front of our eyes right now. This is not the same world that we would be seeing in the textbooks presently. So we need to be creative and understand how the tools that are presented in our classrooms are such that allow us to come up with unique situations or unique solutions that, that target these specific problems as they arise. In some cases, they might be overwhelming as we're, as we're um, uncovering now, but in other cases, there are problems that we could actually chip away at. So creativity is key to a business education and key to your development. Connectedness, connected is another one. How do you maintain a connectedness? And certainly in the virtual world now, how does connectedness change and what does it mean to be connected in a business environment? We know that um, in order to uh, exchange ideas, in order to help solve problems, in order to actually um, engage in commerce and trade goods or ideas, you need to interact. What does interacting mean? Well, certainly in 2019 world, it means getting together into a meeting room, hammering out ideas, coming up with the best possible solutions, and then trying to implement and execute. In the 2020 virtual world, what's that going to look like? What does, what does it mean to be connected? What does it mean for an internationalized company to actually have a Zoom lecture or a Teams lecture or a Teams meeting with all of its associates and sales force around the world talking about what they're seeing in terms of perhaps market demand for their particular products, whatever that might be, or new opportunities? 
what types of digital nuances do we have to be comfortable with or understand as we understand what it means to be connected in this new and challenging environment. And then thirdly, caring. Again, this should be fairly self-evident as we're seeing today. Um, it's not so easy to navigate these waters. There are a lot of folks who are struggling um, and a lot of folks who are trying to figure out how to navigate as best so that they can support themselves, support them, their families and plan for the future. Not easy. Uh, what can we do? What do we do here in terms of instilling that caring element? Uh, a business needs to, or business executives or business managers need to understand that if they don't care about their environment, however defined, that environment isn't going to necessarily support them going forward. This becomes a critical piece to our educational mantra. If we can understand what it means to care for our community, the community that built the streets that allowed us to drive to our factories, the community that um, gets our goods to where they need to be so that we could just in time through our supply chains build the products that we have to send on our way. If we understand that the community that has built a park for kids right around the corner from our offices needs to have certain certain safe spaces as well. These things allow us to understand what caring means in a sustainability sense. And I use the term sustainability, not necessarily solely from an environmental perspective, as it used to be the case in the past, but sustainability in terms of business sustenance. How does a business survive? What are the things that it needs to be considering in order to survive? And caring is certainly front and foremost on practically every single CEO's mind right now as they're trying to navigate. Uh, perhaps not Tesla, but that's a whole other story and we can talk about that later. Next slide, please. So let me take you through our two programs. I know that I have students in the audience who are both accepted to the Bachelor of Commerce and to the Bachelor and or the Bachelor of International Business. Um, so I wanted to very quickly talk about these two uh, and what what you could see coming into coming September should you choose to hit that accept button if you haven't hit if you hadn't hit that accept button yet. Both of our programs, the Bachelor of Commerce and the Bachelor of International Business are honors programs. And what that means is that they're four year undergraduate programs. Um, the requirements to get in, you all know because you've all been accepted or for those of you who haven't been accepted yet, um, you, um, you can certainly look on our website and you can see what the requirements are to get into our programs. But on the Bachelor of Commerce side, we have uh, core business fundamentals that all of you are going to be taught in your first two years. I do want to make mention of the fact that your first year is going to be different than any other first year that any other university student has ever experienced. Now, again, challenging, of course, but there's an exciting element to that, too. You will be the first ones to be exposed to something like this, to this new world order and how it affects business decisions going forward. So those core business fundamentals aren't the same core business fundamentals that mom and dad took in their commerce degrees 20 years ago. It's changing and we need to be up on that. What are the concentrations? Uh, some of you may have chosen concentrations when you applied. It doesn't matter. You can certainly change your concentration once you arrive at Carleton, once you arrive at Sprott. In fact, you have all the way up until the end of second year before you decide which concentration is right for you. Everything that you're taking in the first two years in the Bachelor of Commerce is fairly common across all concentrations. Slight exception in second semester of second year accounting, but everything else is pretty much uniform. So you have way up until the end of your second year to say, oh, you know what, I chose accounting, but I would really prefer finance, or I chose marketing, but I would really prefer management, or I chose entrepreneurship, but I would really prefer international business, and so on. Co-op opportunities. Co-op opportunities exist after you complete your second year. Um, we are working on the assumption that by the time we all complete our, by the time you all complete your second year, we will have a pretty good idea as to where we are with regard to the present pandemic and what um, the government allows us to do in terms of social distancing and in terms of opening up offices and so on and so forth. So a lot of that will change and we have plenty of time to address that. Um, study abroad, notice I have that in brackets and there's an obvious reason for that. Effective this fall, there is no study abroad for the fall. But again, we are anticipating that um, once um, a vaccine is uncovered 
once we figure out how to deal with this pandemic appropriately, studying abroad will become much more of an option for those of you uh, wanting to go away in perhaps your third year, first semester, um, you or second semester for that matter. You have the opportunity to add a minor in another subject, and here it gets pretty interesting on the BCom side. When we're talking about a minor, we're looking at a complementary degree or a complementary set of courses, excuse me, in another faculty. So I'll use finance, for example, because as I mentioned at the outset, I'm an associate professor of finance. For me, what would be really interesting if I were studying finance would be to take a minor in math. A lot of the financial elements on my in my in my finance world are on the investment side where I deal with investments in the markets. Uh, options and futures, all sorts of things that are fairly math heavy. And from my perspective, it would be neat to have a minor to support me uh, in that regard. With regard to the um, other, perhaps marketing as a concentration, other minors like psychology might be interesting or things like that. Economics, uh, statistics, there are many opportunities outside of our faculty to add to and expand on your degree. And that's the Bachelor of Commerce. Roughly 450 to 500 students get into the Bachelor of Commerce in any given year, um, which is, uh, I'd say, probably a magnitude of five or six times the size of the BIB, the Bachelor of International Business. The Bachelor of International Business is in fact a, an honors degree as well, but this one is more focused on international business per se. International business doesn't necessarily mean international travel, although that is a cornerstone of the Bachelor of International Business as it stands now, but international business too is morphing. I mentioned earlier that there are going to be changes with regard to how we digitally communicate now, how we virtually communicate um, across borders. That's something that we're going to be addressing within the BIB. So again, You'll notice that last bullet says mandatory study and or internship brackets abroad. As of right now, there is no abroad, but certainly by the time those of you who are in the BIB reach your third year, you will be planning to travel abroad. What's exciting as well is that it's not just study. There's the opportunity to have an internship abroad, and that internship could potentially be virtual as well um, if it was a domestic internship that dealt with international companies. So there's interesting opportunities there. The other element that's unique to the BIB is the intensive language training. So there are five languages that you have the choice to take in. Um, all of those languages are, um, are available to you in accelerated form. So effectively in your first two years, for example, with German, you would be taking four years worth of uh, German in your first two years so that by the time you all hit third year, you'd be ready to go abroad. I'm looking at a question on the side which says, will all the classes have three hour lectures online? That's an excellent question. Uh, and the answer is no, not necessarily. What we're working on in terms of preparing for class delivery, as you can imagine, is having somebody staring at a screen for three hours is probably no, not the most productive way to deal with Zoom or Teams or anything like that. Uh, we're looking at um, perhaps um, snippets of lectures that might be 15, 20 minutes in length that would be available in asynchronous or in different times so that it would be a canned lecture that you could look at. You can then take that lecture, um, watch it at your leisure, and then perhaps have a uh, breakout session that would be live in your class that might last for 50 minutes or an hour where you would have questions and discussions that would take place amongst a much, a much smaller cohort of class. So you would go and do your lecture, you would watch your lecture on your own, perhaps 15 minutes of this subject, 20 minutes of that subject, so on and so forth. It will depend on the course um, and it will depend on what material needs to be conveyed, but a three hour lecture is certainly not what we have planned in terms of ensuring that everybody's attention span is maintained. Excellent question. Um, next slide, please. At, um, at Sprott, we pride ourselves on what we refer to as a three-pronged approach. What I alluded to earlier with regard to the building and what is critical to business success is focusing on what I call academics, engagement, and career as the three prongs of attack. Um, we have a central office that deals from an undergraduate perspective all, with all three of those. We have advisors who deal with your academics. We have advisors who deal with your engagement elements within academics and within other social activities. 
And we have a dedicated career center that helps take your academics and your engagement and package it into career opportunities. Those three all work in tandem as you work through from year one through year four. So starting in year one, you're already um, dealing with working towards your career once you graduate. You'll be working in year one with building a new resume, with working on cover letters, interview skills, all sorts of elements that are going to be essential to determining how to best set yourself up for the careers that you're looking for. Academics are obviously key. You need to do well in class. You need to pull on those tools and use those tools appropriately. Um, and engagement is that third prong, which we find is essential to what I like to refer to as having skin in the game getting involved. Um, if you've got skin in the game so that you have a stake, um, you have an interest, you are much more inclined to participate in your academics and in other activities as they present. What um, We have um, our outgoing SBSS president, Zara Shah, who's going to be coming online in a few minutes to talk about specific engagement on opportunities and as they pertain to SBSS, which stands for the Sprott Business Student Society, which is going to be all of you running your society, running your student council, so to speak, that, as I said, Zara is the outgoing president on. She's going to talk about really cool engagement opportunities that we're going to be implementing come the fall that we've never done before, again, because why? We haven't had to deal with that an online environment like this. So how do you engage in an online environment? And they've got some great ideas that they're working on that we're helping them support, which will also come into play with regard to that three hour lecture discussion that I just talked about as well. So keep that in mind. Next slide, please. I want to talk about this very quickly um, and specifically because although we have those three prongs with regard to uh, academics, engagement and career, the fourth and probably most critical element of a business education is what I'm going to refer to as agility. How quickly can you move? How quickly can you find out what that new problem is and go out there and try to solve it? We've just started this up literally a month ago. Um, why? Because it only came to front one month ago. We have a crisis management and recovery um, process through our project-based learning initiative where we are educating, taking our students, our undergraduate fourth year graduating students and some fourth year and third year students, as well as MBA students, providing them with a crisis management and recovery certificate over the next six weeks. It's actually happening now. It started May 4th. And then once those six weeks are completed, they are then going out and helping local companies figure out how to navigate this whole COVID environment. What can we do to help our community that has supported us? What can we do to support them to ensure that sustainability is front and foremost for all of them? We want nothing more than all of our businesses in our local community and throughout Ontario, the country and the world for that matter, to survive. How can we help make that happen? Six weeks happening right now, students are learning, then they're rolling up their sleeves and going out virtually into the community to help our local companies maintain and survive. So we're really excited about that. And I wanted to talk about that just from an agility perspective. Next slide, please. Um, and so just wrapping up really quickly before I turn it over to Zara, what is the Sprott experience all about? Experiential learning. You'll notice obviously in these pictures, the top left, um, that's a group of students in front of the New York Stock Exchange. That's obviously not happening today, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to be happening in the future. And experiential learning opportunities like that um, are something that we pride ourselves on and something that we will continue to endeavor to ensure that you experience as we go forward, whether it means initially in a virtual environment or, or alternatively as we can slowly start to relax and get back to what what perhaps might be the new normal, figuring out what these experiential learning opportunities might be. Project-based learning, I just mentioned our Crisis Management and Recovery Center. The Student Investment Fund is in fact those folks in front of the New York Stock Exchange. We went down on a trip there. We do have opportunities for students to compete against other students at university level competitions. We call it Sprott Competes. For those of you who are taking, who are participating in DECA in high school, we refer to this as DECA on steroids. It's a very exciting opportunity for you to actually compete against fellow students. Outstanding student support. As I said, we have a dedicated advising staff on academics and advising staff on careers. We have a, a very active student engagement body. We also have a new initiative referred to as an employability passport, which takes you through specific skills 
through your four years in that career center that focus on, on ensuring that you are as best equipped as possible for that interview four years from now. Um, and with that, I believe my next slide turns it over to Zara, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Off to you, Zara. Thank you, Howard. So hello, everybody. I thought I would just start off by introducing myself a little bit. So my name is Zara. I am a Bachelor of Commerce student concentrating in finance. Um, this year I'll be going into my fourth year and whilst the years have definitely sped by me a little bit, I wanted to take some time today to just reflect on some of my memories and experiences here at Sprott. So a little bit about me, I was born and raised in the UK um, in the City of London and as I kind of approached the end of my high school life, I was really nervous. I didn't know where I wanted to go for university. I had done a lot of tours in England um, and nothing really had grasped my attention. Um, I wasn't very, I wasn't feeling connected to the schools or the campuses there. So I decided to take a gap year and really try and find what was right for me. Um, so in 2017, I had visited Ottawa and I had taken a tour of Carlton. And one of the things that initially drew me to university was definitely the campus. I loved being um, I love that the university had a lot of space, um, but it was still sort of enclosed. You know, being from England, most of the universities in London were spaced out across the city. And whilst that was great for some, for me, I loved that Carlton had more of a community feel to it. Everyone was kind of together. Um, and of course, one of the best things was the tunnels for me. For British girls, the, the tunnels are a lifesaver in the summer. Um, and then kind of moving on to my first semester here at Sprott, I took part in fall orientation in September. And that's when I really knew that I had made the right choice for myself. So I actually have a picture there on the left hand side of the screen. And that was from fall orientation last year or from Sprosh, as we call it. Um, and it really brings back a lot of memories of my first Sprosh um, because that's kind of where the rest of the years really um, started for me. That's kind of where all of my memories started. It, you know, it's the, it's the place where I cracked my first case, how I talked about Sprott Competes. You know, that's where you do your first case crack. Um, I met the Sprott Business Student Society team or the SBSS team, as we call them. Um, and I knew right away that I wanted to get involved in those extracurriculars to try and meet new people. I really loved the engagement and the energy that these people had. So I really wanted to get involved right away. And I applied to be the first year representative for the SBSS. I learned a lot in the role and I got to you know, meet a lot of students in my first year and build those connections. And then I moved on to a director position in my second year. And that's when I really got to develop my connections outside of the school. Um, I got to know a lot of local businessmen, businesswomen, and we really got to partner with some local companies in the society. And then given I was heavily involved in the school, myself and seven other students were chosen to work in recruitment and we visited the Ontario University Fair. That's where that image in the middle was taken. And here was when I really understood the importance of connections, um, not only with the people outside of Sprott, but also the people close to us. I think one of the most valuable lessons I realised in my term, in my years here at Sprott is that Network doesn't just mean the people outside of school, it, it really is a lot closer to home. So I got to meet thousands of prospective students at the fair, but what was more important to me was the fact that I got to spend time with our Dean, Dean Brown, um, and a fellow, fellow student who um, is actually in that picture, Emma. So funnily enough, I had never met Emma before, and I don't think I would have if it wasn't for this opportunity and now Emma and I are in all of our projects together. We decided as soon as we came back from that fair that we wanted to do all of our class projects together and um, she's one of my closest friends now. So I think that's one of the most important things is that connections doesn't mean who you meet outside of school, but also the people around you. And if you don't take those opportunities, you won't ever get to meet those people around you. So throughout the remainder of my years, I carried what Sprott had taught me about getting involved and building those connections as much as I could. And then this past year, I was fortunate enough to be elected as the SBSS president or the Sprott Business Student Society president. 
Um, so as Howard said, I've had the opportunity to serve um, as the president this year. I served as a board of director. I led a group of amazing students, around 50 students in total. And I met some amazing students from all across the country as well. So that image on the bottom left there, that was taken at a conference in Winnipeg. And it's myself with all the other business student association presidents. So there's a president from Winnipeg there, there's someone from Victoria, there's someone from Schulich, you know, all these other universities across the country that we really got to connect with. Um, and I guess that brings me nicely to today and where I am. So I've just finished serving my one year term as president and it was honestly the best year of my undergraduate degree. Not only did I get to put on some amazing events for students and some amazing initiatives, which I'll talk a little bit about now as well, but the connections I built and the lessons I learned along the way really did set me up for what I'm doing now and for my future, I think. So, you know, learning to apply your project management skills, managing a budget, um, running board of director meetings and really learning the importance of like corporate governance and things like that. You don't really get the opportunity to do that outside of the classroom unless you take opportunities like this and having that ability to apply those core concepts that we learn in the classroom and put them into a real situation is just invaluable. Um, so as I was finishing my term as president, I actually had the opportunity to work with the school on an initiative called Sprott Compete. Oh, sorry, Sprott Connects. Sprott Competes is what we were talking about before, but Sprott Connects, which is an opportunity for students to connect and spend time together virtually. And this is not just for current students who you know, are away from campus and might want to connect with friends again or connect with um, fellow students. This is for you guys as well. So we know that with this changing landscape comes a lot of, um, you know, new opportunities, not only hardships, but opportunities as well. And I think this was a great opportunity for us to show that, you know, we were able to adapt and remain resilient in providing a sense of community, the sense of community that we have on campus. We're still able to provide that virtually so I would highly recommend that you guys take um, take the opportunity to get involved in Sprott Connect you'll be paired up with a fellow student um, you can ask them any questions it might be someone like me you can ask us anything you want or you can even just hang out play some games find something fun to do um, I think we all need a little bit of a break sometimes um, especially in the environment that we find ourselves in right now so this is just our way of providing that connection to you guys that you might not be able to be getting if you were on campus. Um, so that kind of, again, brings me to what I'm doing right now. So this summer, I'm actually working with Canada Revenue Agency um, in their project management team, and more specifically on governance and reporting, which was actually exactly what I had learned being a part of SBSS. So that's been great that I can now apply those skills to what I'm doing this summer. And then, it finally brings me to the last image on the screen there, which is the largest image. And for me, this really captures what Sprott meant for me all these years. So this picture was actually taken on a merchandise shoot for um, the society's website. So we had just released some merchandise and we were taking some pictures for the website. And for me, it really encompasses a lot of the memories that I had on the Sprott Business Student Society, not only as president, but as that first year rep, as the director as well. All those people that I got to know, um, I really, I think I've gained some of like my bestest friends being on that society. And of course, the picture was taken on our beautiful campus in front of Dunton Tower, which is where it all started for me, which was the campus. So um, like we said, we've, we've got a new building that's gonna be joining our beautiful campus and making it even better. So that's kind of where I'm gonna leave it, I guess. I think that's everything I wanted to say. And I think, um, I hope this is giving you a little bit of taste of what Sprott meant for me and giving you a better idea of what it might mean for you in the future. Excellent. Thank you so much, Zara. That was um, that was incredibly informative, especially the Sprott Connects. There was a question along the sidebar that was asking about whether we would be able to, or whether uh, the student would be able to, vert, would be able to connect with and network with other friends, um, meet other people, whether it be in class or whatever. And Sprott Connect certainly gives, hopefully, some insight as to how we are trying to make this as normal as possible, so that we have the opportunity for students to actually engage 
um, and 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 make new friends and make new associations and network um, in this new and as I said uncharted world. Um, which brings us to our Q and A. Um, there have been some questions that have been flying along the side that I've been trying to answer to the best of my ability. Um, and um, and if we can get to all of them, great. If uh, if not, then we'll get to them um, through the next uh, 15, 20 minutes or so. Um, but I just wanted to very quickly, before I turn it over to all of you, um, just say that uh, as you're all now facing this situation of, okay, what am I going to do in September? And how this is, how is this all going to work? Um, know that um, first and foremost, your health and well-being is, is paramount. This is what we're here for. We're obviously here to educate you, but we want to educate you in a way that ensures that your health and well-being is, is uh, first and foremost, is, 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 is key to our success. Um, as you've gotten a little bit of a taste as to whom we are, and perhaps some more questions that you have over the next 15, 20 minutes or so, will enlighten you a bit more. Um, hopefully this gives you a better sense of what it would mean to become a Sprott student. Um, hopefully some of the insights that Zara had shared with you uh, gives you an idea from a student's perspective. Obviously, I can talk to it from an academic perspective, but I think that hearing it specifically from Zara, your ex-president of the SBSS, or outgoing president of the SBSS, um, uh, I think puts it in a different light. So that's uh, that's hopefully something that, from an informational perspective, was useful. Um, with that, as I said, there are folks uh, behind the scenes who are answering or able to answer all sorts of questions with regard to admissions, financial aid, international elements, uh, residents, all sorts of things. Um, and then we certainly have Sprott specific. I can, st I will stay on the line for a few more minutes. Should there be any Sprott specific questions that you want me to answer beyond what I've answered in the sidebar already? Um, and, uh, and if there are, if there are none, um, great. If there are some, then great as well. Uh, but in the meantime, as I said at the outset, I wish you all obviously the best of health and thank you so much for spending the afternoon with us. So I'm not seeing anything coming up. Notice that the moderator has just posted the Sprott Connect um, a URL so that you can you can take a look at that and take Zara up on her offer of uh, speaking to her about uh, about all of the um, the tricks and tr tricks of the trade. I do want to make mention to another moderator post as well. 2024 at sprott.carlton.ca goes directly to our um, recruiting officer, so for, for Sprott specifically. So if you are um, unsure of questions presently and you do have follow ups, uh, please just mail them straight to 2024 2024, the year you'll all be graduating at sprott.carlton.ca and, um, and we will address that. All right, so with that, Carly, should I sign off then? And then uh, if there are any other questions, people can then send them through the chat. Excellent. Well, thank you all again for taking the time, and I hope this was informative. Uh, again, if you do have any questions beyond, please just email us and we'll do our best to answer. Look forward to seeing many of you, if not all of you, come September, and I do wish you all a safe and healthy summer with you and your family. Take care, everybody.